Pull the truck and fifth wheel together onto the scale for the first way. Bring the truck back alone for the second way. The weight of the fifth wheel and truck together, subtract the weight of the truck alone, is the fifth wheel gross vehicle weight. Alice's worst fear when we decided to go full time was getting into an accident while pulling our home down the highway and becoming homeless. When we made the decision to sell our house and live full time in a fifth wheel, we didn't know the first thing about fifth wheels or trucks. I'd never owned a pickup truck in my whole life. I spent the last 20 years raising kids, driving minivans, small SUVs, and a Prius. We spent months watching YouTube videos and reading blogs. We learned that matching the truck to the fifth wheel was really important. We didn't want to buy the wrong truck to pull our new home. We decided to get a diesel crew cab long bed truck and had zeroed in on the Ram because a lot of fifth wheelers were recommending it. But the big question was single rear wheel versus dual rear wheels, sometimes referred to as dualies. We ended up buying a dual rear wheel truck, even though at the time I thought a single rear wheel truck could pull a 35 foot fifth wheel easily. As it turns out, if I had purchased the single rear wheel version of our truck instead, we would be overweight in two out of the five critical weight measurements for our truck. More about that at the end of the video. We have had our fifth wheel for almost two years now, and have been full time for just over a year. I have weighed six times since then. That may seem like a lot, but we have been really close to maxing out our fifth wheel gross vehicle weight rating since the day we moved in. Every time we make a significant change to what's in the rig, we get to a CAT scale. Whether you are somebody looking for your first fifth wheel or already own one, you need to know the critical weight parameters of the truck and fifth wheel and how they affect each other. I will describe six reasons why doing this is really important. I'm gonna go over the important weight ratings numbers, where to find them, what they mean, how to weigh your truck and fifth wheel on a CAT scale, then I will compare our actual weights to our truck and fifth wheel ratings established by the manufacturers. This video is specific to fifth wheels, but this information could also be applied to travel trailers. Instead of going over every acronym concerning truck and fifth wheel weights, and there are a lot of them, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna cover the ones that I think are most important. Let's start with the weight ratings determined by the truck manufacturers. Truck GVW, gross vehicle weight. The weight of the truck plus its occupants plus the cargo plus the vertical weight the fifth wheel is exerting on the truck. The limit established for this is GVWR, Gross Vehicle Weight Rating. We will get this number from the VIN sticker inside the driver's door of the truck. Truck GAW Front, Gross Axle Weight Front Wheels. The weight exerted on the front steer axles of the truck. The limit established for this is called the GAWR front, gross axle weight rating front. This will also be on the VIN sticker in the truck. Truck GAW rear, gross axle weight rear wheels. The weight exerted on the rear drive axles of the truck while attached to the fifth wheel, including the vertical weight of the fifth wheel. The limit established for this is the GAWR rear, gross axle weight rating rear. This is also on the VIN sticker of the truck. Truck GCVW, gross combined vehicle weight. The total combined weight of the truck and the fifth wheel and all the contents traveling down the highway. The limit established for this is called the GCVWR, gross combined vehicle weight rating. We will get this number from the tool on the BMW Hitches website. Truck trailer weight the total weight of the fifth wheel and all of its contents. We will have to calculate total trailer weight by taking the total weight of the truck and the fifth wheel together from the first way and subtracting the total weight of the truck alone on the second way. The limit established for this may be called tow rating or max trailer weight rating. We will also get this number from the tool on the B&W Hitches website. Now, where can we find the truck weight rating information? the gross vehicle weight rating and the gross axle weight rating for the front axle and the gross axle weight rating for the rear axle can usually be found on the VIN sticker inside the driver's door of the truck. Here's our VIN sticker. The gross axle weight rating for the truck is right here, 14,000 pounds. The gross axle weight rating for the front axles is 6,000 pounds. And the gross axle weight rating for the rear wheels, the rear axle is 
9,750 pounds. Unfortunately, Ram does not put the gross combined vehicle weight rating or the max tow capacity on the VIN sticker. Ram publishes a PDF document that has all the rating information that you will need, including gross combined weight rating and max trailer weight. You will need to know what engine and transmission, what the rear end actual ratio is on your particular truck. If you don't know this information, you can use the window sticker lookup tool. The window sticker should have the engine and transmission and axle ratio information on it. I will leave a link to the RAM website and the sticker lookup tool in the video description. I will also leave a link to the GM and Ford websites where they publish similar documents with their rate ratings. The great thing about these documents is that all the information you need for your truck is in one place. The easiest way that I've found to get the gross combined vehicle weight rating and the max tow rating for your truck is to use the fifth wheel tow ratings finder on the B&W Trailer Hitches website. You just input your truck's make, model, year, drive, cab, bed, engine, and transmission, and if it's a doer wheel or a single rear wheel. And it will let you download the information specific to your truck, whether it's a Ram, Ford, GMC, Chevy, Nissan, or Toyota. Scroll down to the row that matches your truck. Play close attention to the axle ratio. The axle ratio is what makes a big difference in the numbers. It shows gross confined weight rating, gross vehicle weight rating, and tow rating. The gross combined vehicle weight rating for our truck is 29,300 pounds, and the max tow rating for our truck is 20,520 pounds. Now we will go over the weight ratings determined by the fifth wheel manufacturer. Fifth wheel GVW, gross vehicle weight, the total weight of the fifth wheel and all of its contents. We will have to calculate this number by taking the total weight of the truck and fifth wheel together from the first way and subtracting the total weight of the truck from the second way. The limit established for this is called the GVWR, gross vehicle weight rating, and includes any liquids in the fresh, black, and gray tanks. This number should be on the VIN sticker on the side of the fifth wheel. Fifth wheel GAW, gross axle weight. The weight on the axles of the fifth wheel. The limit established for this is the gross axle weight rating and is usually given per axle. So on a two axle fifth wheel like ours, the number would be double. This number should also be on the VIN sticker on the side of the fifth wheel. Getting the weight rating information for our fifth wheel is a lot easier than on the truck. It's right here on the VIN sticker on the side of our fifth wheel. The gross vehicle weight rating is 15,000 pounds and the gross axle weight rating for each axle is 7,000 pounds. We have two axles, so that's 14,000 pounds. Now that we know what all of our truck and fifth wheel weight ratings limits are, it's time to get our RV weight to see if we're within those limits. If you tow with a diesel truck, then you probably already use the trucker lanes at large travel centers to fill up your truck when towing the RV. This is a much easier way to fill up while towing versus using regular gas stations. If you're not using the trucker lanes in the back, then you are really missing out. Check out our video on how we use the truck lanes for the first time. I will leave a link right up here. At most of these large trucker travel centers like Pilot, Travel America, and Loves, they have cat scales somewhere in the back. These scales are there so that 18-wheeler truckers can weigh their trucks so that when they get to a mandatory weigh station on the highway, they know if they are legal. Using these cat scales for weighing your fifth wheel is quick and easy. The scales are usually empty as truckers do not use them that much. Don't be intimidated by entering the world of the professional trucker. There is usually a very easy way to get into and out of these trucker areas at these large travel centers. To get all the information you need, you have to do two weigh-ins, one with the truck and RV together and one with the truck alone. To get the trailer gross vehicle weight, we need to subtract the weight of the, the, weight of the truck alone from the total weight of the truck and RV together when attached. The scales will have three to four platforms. The front wheels of the truck go on the front platform for the steer axle. The rear wheels of the truck go on the second platform for the drive axle. All the fifth wheel axles go on the third platform for the trailer axles. There are two ways to get your weigh ticket. Number one, hit the button on the intercom on the scale and the weigh master will ask you if you're doing your first weigh or a reweigh. They will also ask you for your truck number. Just say one, two, three, four. They need a number to associate you with your weigh ticket. 
You cannot use your name. It must be a number. After you are done, you'll have to go to the fuel desk inside and get a printed way ticket. Number two, the way we do it, is I use the Way My Truck app on my smartphone. This can usually be done in less than a couple of minutes. First, take a few minutes to download the app and then go to waymytruck.com to register and enter your payment information. You will be much more likely to weigh your fifth wheel more often if you have the app and you won't have to park your RV and go to the fuel desk inside to get a printed weigh ticket. I pull the truck and RV onto the scale and confirm that each axle is on the correct scale platform. Then I open the Weigh My Truck app. The first screen will ask you for the CAT scale location number. This number should be prominently displayed on the CAT scale sign near the front of the scale on the driver's side. Enter the number, then hit accept. The next screen will ask you to confirm your company and truck number information from your registration on weighmytruck.com. Hit accept again. The next screen will display how much it will cost, typically about $12. Hit accept again. The Waymaster at the fuel desk has to approve and validate your payment, and then it will display your steer axle, drive axle, and trailer axle weight data. If you use the app, all of your weigh-ins are saved on the waymytruck.com and can be accessed anytime. Now that you've weighed your truck and RV together, now you need to weigh your truck alone without the fifth wheel attached. There are two ways to do this. You can park your fifth wheel at the truck stop, unhook, weigh the truck, and then hook back up, or you can do what we do. We find a cat scale that is close to a campground that we're going to stay at. The day before we leave the campground, I take the truck to the cat scale and weigh the truck alone. Then as we were leaving the campground the next day, I weigh the RV and truck together. Sometimes we do this in reverse. We weigh the truck and RV together just before we park at the campground. Then I bring the truck back the next day to do the reweigh with the truck alone. When you come back with the truck alone for the reway, open the Weigh My Truck app on your phone again. Enter the scale location number. If you're using the same scale within 24 hours of the first way, it will ask you if you're doing a first way or a reway. Choose reway. The reway is only $3. After the Waymaster authorizes the way, it will display the steer axle weight and the drive axle weight for the truck alone. Now you have all the information you need to determine if you're within your weight limits. As an example, we're going to compare the actual weights of our truck and fifth wheel to their ratings. Our truck is a 2018 Ram 3500 long bed crew cab with dual rear wheels. It has the 6.7 liter Cummins turbo diesel engine and the ISIN transmission with a 3.42 axle ratio. Our fifth wheel is a 2017 Grand Design Solitude 310 GK and is 35 feet long. I will leave links in the description to our video tours about the truck and the RV. Before we get into the example, here's a summary of all the information that we've collected so far. Here's the information for the first way, which is the truck and RV weighed together. Here's the second way information, which is the truck weighed alone. Here's the rating information for the truck. And then the ratings information for the fifth wheel. Our truck gross vehicle weight is 5,300 for the steer axle, 7,540 for the rear axle for a total gross vehicle weight of 12,840 pounds. This includes the weight of the fifth wheel pushing on the bed of the truck. The gross vehicle weight rating for our truck is 14,000 pounds. Subtract the actual gross vehicle weight of 12,840 pounds we are 1,160 pounds under. The gross axle weight of our front wheels, which is the steer axle, is 5,300 pounds. The gross axle weight rating for the front wheels is 6,000 pounds. Subtract the actual weight of 5,300 pounds and we're under by 700 pounds. The gross axle weight of the rear wheels was 7,540 pounds. The gross axle weight rating for the rear wheels was 9,750 pounds. Subtract the actual weight of 7,540 pounds, we are 2,210 pounds under. Our gross combined vehicle weight, 5,300 pounds for the steer axles plus 7,540 pounds for the drive axles plus 12,120 pounds for the trailer axles 
the gross combined vehicle weight equals 24,960 pounds. The gross combined vehicle weight rating for our truck is 29,300 pounds. Subtract the actual weight of 24,960 pounds, we are 4,430 pounds under. To calculate our trailer weight, we take the total combined weight of the truck and RV together, 24,960 pounds, and subtract the weight of the truck alone, 9,880, gives us a total trailer weight of 15,080 pounds. The max trailer weight rating for our truck is 20,300 pounds. Subtract the actual trailer weight of 15,080 pounds means we are 5,220 pounds under. The gross vehicle weight of our fifth wheel is calculated by taking the total combined weight of our truck and fifth wheel together, 24,960 pounds, subtract the weight of the truck alone, 9,880, gives us a gross vehicle weight of our fifth wheel, 15,080 pounds. The gross vehicle weight rating for our fifth wheel is 15,000 pounds. Subtract our actual gross vehicle weight of 15,080 pounds, we're actually 80 pounds over. This is the one we constantly struggle to keep underweight. The gross axle weight for our fifth wheel is 12,120 pounds for both trailer axles. The gross axle weight rating for our fifth wheel is 14,000 pounds, 7,000 pounds per axle. Subtract our actual gross axle weight of 12,120 pounds, we are 1,880 pounds under. Why should you weigh your truck and fifth wheel and compare it to your truck and fifth wheel weight ratings? Safety. It is not safe to drive your truck and fifth wheel outside its rated capacity. It's not just how much your truck can tow, it's how much it can stop. Tire loading and inflation pressure. For our RV tires, Goodyear recommends weighing the RV fully loaded so you can determine the proper tire inflation pressure using the chart for the tires. The higher the load on the tires, the higher the inflation pressure required. The sticker on the side of RV, which has the recommended tire pressure information, says that our tire should be at 80 PSI. The sidewall of the tire says that the max pressure is 110 PSI, but that's for 3,750 pounds of load. According to the tire loading chart for our tires, we are still within the 80 to 85 PSI range for the 3,030 pound load on our tires. The only way to know for sure is to weigh your RV and check the tire loading chart for your tires. I will leave a link in the description to the Goodyear RV Tire website with lots of great information on RV tire pressure. Insurance. If you get into an accident when towing your fifth wheel, there's a good chance an accident reconstructionist will be hired to determine the cause of the accident. His report will include information about the weight of the truck and the RV and whether he believes either was over their published weight ratings. If he determines that you were overweight, your insurance company may not cover the damage to your fifth wheel or the damage to other vehicles caused by you during the accident, leaving you to pay the costs out of pocket. Weight inspection stations. Even though fifth wheels are not required to enter weigh stations in most states as they are not commercial vehicles, an officer can direct you to a weigh station if he thinks your fifth wheel is traveling on the highway unsafely. It would be better to know that you are operating within the limits of your fifth wheel and truck just in case. Truck and fifth wheel longevity. Traveling with your truck and trailer overweight will put a lot of stress on the drivetrain, suspension, and brakes. You will have much fewer problems with damage to these systems if you are underweight. Warranty. Even though it would be hard for a fifth wheel or truck manufacturer to prove that you are operating overweight and that is what caused the damage to your vehicle, it is possible for them to get out of having to honor a warranty claim because you are operating over the rated weight limits. Are you considering buying a fifth wheel in a truck? If you don't own either yet, start with a fifth wheel. Find a few fifth wheels that you really like and then find their gross vehicle weight rating and their cargo capacity. Assume that you'll be maxing out the cargo capacity of the fifth wheel when purchasing the truck. If you are considering full-time RVing, make sure you get an RV with as much cargo capacity as possible. Opt for the upgraded axle package if they offer one. Consider all the stuff you may be adding to your RV, washer dryer, dishwasher, generator, solar panels, and extra batteries. 
Don't listen to the RV salesman. Do your own research and make sure you buy a fifth wheel with the cargo capacity you need. When buying a truck for the fifth wheel, run the numbers yourself to make sure you'll be well within the weight ratings to pull your fifth wheel. An RV salesman is incentivized to sell you the biggest, most expensive fifth wheel, no matter how overweighted it may be for the truck you already own. Earlier, I mentioned we would be overweight on two of our truck's weight ratings if we had purchased a single rear wheel truck instead of a dual rear wheel. We would be 540 pounds over on our truck's gross vehicle weight rating, and we would be 540 pounds over our gross axle weight rating for the rear wheels. The single rear wheel version of our truck has 1,700 pounds less gross vehicle weight rating and 2,950 pounds less gross axle weight rating for the rear wheels. You should really study the numbers yourself between the single rear wheel and the dual rear wheel before you buy a truck for your fifth wheel. Whether you already own a truck and a fifth wheel or are considering buying the combination, you need to understand how to weigh your rig and to see if you're within the manufacturer's weight rating limits. Do you have a fifth wheel? Do you weigh your rig to make sure you are towing safely? Is there something that I have missed? Please share your experience in the comments. You can also share your thoughts on our Facebook and Instagram pages. If you thought this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you like this kind of content, we do lots of RV how-to videos like this, campground reviews, RV product reviews, and full-time RV travel experiences, please consider subscribing to our channel by clicking this link below. It would really help us out. And remember, downsizing does make sense.